welcome to Hethel, the Lotus factory and test track. We are currently in the pit lane of the test track. You're gonna hear some cars going around the track. There they go. We are here today to check out two Lotuses that I've never seen before. I'm a massive fan of the brand, so I wanna be able to see and experience every single car basically that they have in their lineup. So, first things first, we're gonna kick it off with the Avora 410, and then we're gonna to go to the uh, 311, which is their most hardcore, most expensive car, and is absolutely awesome. So that's coming late in the video, but right now, I have the keys to the Avora 410, the brand new, well, brand new, it's not so brand new, it's pretty new, Avora 410, um, which is their, for now, most hardcore, uh, version of the Avora lineup. Um, this video will probably be going out by the time that a new Avora has come out and that will be spoken about in videos to come. But this is the Avora 410. So based obviously on the Avora chassis, which is completely different to that of the Elise and the Exige. Um, I've been in the factory a few times and I've been able to experience that and see it. Um, the Avora 410, so it started off with the Avora, then there was the Avora 400, um, and now there is the Avora 410. It is based on the initially the same uh, three and a half litre V6, but then it has a charge cooled supercharger, which is a bit bigger and gives out more power. So this car is 410 horsepower. It does not 16, 3.9 seconds, to a speed of 190 miles an hour. And this one being the automatic, comes in at about 1300 kilos. Uh, the manual obviously is quite a bit lighter than that. So it is basically a lighter, more powerful version of the Evora 400. Now then, lighter because they've used carbon fiber. There is ample amounts of carbon fiber around the body. So there's carbon fiber, for example, here on this, I guess, front bumper slash splitter, uh, which looks awesome, but also saves some weight. That is continued with some carbon fiber right here and this little panel, which you can remove to have your all sorts of little information over there. Um, new wheels as well, I believe. New uh, rim design. Carbon fiber wing mirrors, which on a Lotus, we have central locking, which I always get very excited about, but they actually go in. You see that? Oh, we've got another one pulling in behind us right there. But look, the mirrors go in and out on lock and unlock, which is pretty bloody cool. Um, it's something that on a Lotus is a real luxury. Uh, we've then got this striping down the side in this car is in matte black with the 410 logo. Uh, we then got a full carbon fiber roof. This is a massive carbon panel, uh, which will save a bunch of weight and looks awesome. So that is on the 410s only, as well as a massive one piece tailgate. Huge slab of carbon fiber right here, um, which is pretty cool. I'll actually open it up for you so that you can see what that's like once it's opened. I believe there's a button right here, boom. And this just opens up and it's actually, it actually hasn't got the hydraulic um, strut, so you need to put it, hold it up manually uh, using this right here, which goes in somewhere around. Anyways, you get the idea. Basically, all to save weight. Uh, a boot, which isn't massive, uh, but bigger, I believe, around the same as in the Exige. Now then, you do have the option of getting a titanium exhaust. There we go, that's closed. Uh, this car does not have the titanium exhaust option, however, it does have carbon fiber on the rear diffuser as well with the parking sensors. Now then, this car, I absolutely love because you get the Lotus spirit, you get the Lotus noise, you get the Lotus handling and stuff, but you also get a little bit more comfort. So if we hop inside, I'll show that to you. Um, okay, so first things first, this being with the 410 and it being lighter, it is slightly more hardcore than the 400, but still perfectly usable and somewhat of a GT car. First things first, in the Exige is a mission and the Elise to get in. In this, it's very easy. You just step in so much easier than in the other Lotuses. You're greeted by a flurry of leather and Alcantara. So for example, these door cards um, are all complete in Alcantara with the contrast stitching. And the 410, they also have a deleted um, armrest so to save weight as well. So you don't really have anywhere to put your arm, but that's all in the name of weight saving. You then got the same carbon seats as I have in the Exige Sport 380, and that are also in the Cup 380 and all of basically the higher end Lotuses. You've got these uh, beautifully molded carbon seats, which are actually quite comfortable and hold you in quite nicely. Then around here, um, it is all so much more luxurious than in the Exige. So for example, everything is all finished in Alcantara or leather up here, Alcantara steering wheel, Alcantara above the dashboard. The dashboard itself, you have two little screens on each side of the analog uh, rev counter and speedometer. Um, which look awesome. You've then got these ni uh, slightly nicer finishes on the air vents. Um, you've got everything electric for the mirrors, stuff like that, which you don't have in the Exiges. Uh, little cubbies as well, where you can hide some stuff down here. Uh, and then on the center console, 
is where you really start to see how much more comfortable these cars are than the Exigia. So this one is an automatic gearbox. You have your park, reverse, neutral and drive settings. Paddles on the steering wheel, which are beautifully finished. And I don't know if they're aluminium or metal, but they feel really nice and expensive when you touch them, which is a nice touch because the paddles is something hopefully you'd be using a lot. So you really want those to feel good. You've then got your cruise control settings on the steering wheel. Now I love the design of this steering wheel. You've got this little um, uh, ring here so you can see exactly where you're steering um, and when you're pointing the steering wheel, which is very nice. You've then also got a full sound system. So as you can tell down here, we've got a proper speaker as well as up on the dashboard right here. We've got a Sport 380 driving around as well. Kind of awesome. um, but yeah, you've got a full Alpine system. This is actually a cost option. Uh, to be able to have this because in the 410s uh, they come standard with no radio um, so you have this it sounds good proper sound system uh, which in the sport 380 is not great let's be honest whereas in this car it does sound really good um, you've then got all of your buttons on top here which we'll show you in a bit for your sport mode race modes your hazards obviously your lock and unlock buttons and then your exhaust valve override button so you can be in your comfort modes but still have the exhaust open that's all continued over here with more contrast stitching, more Alcantara, and a little plaque with uh, David Hills, who's built um, the most part of this car, who is also the same guy who worked on my Sport 380. Now in the back, in the 410, you usually, um, in the 400s, you get back seats around here, but in the 410, is a two-seat option only. So you actually have this huge storage area where you could fit like a massive amount of bags. So this is basically probably about double the size if not triple of the boot run back so having this is a massive advantage and you can put a bunch of bags here so that's fantastic to be able to have that behind now then i'm going to start this up it being basically based on the same engine it sounds similar to my car but a lot more meaty and graspy so key in i'm going to start it open the valves and give you a few revs because the engine's warm sounding isn't it? It is. I've never been able to drive an Aurora and I'm not going to be able to drive this car today as with the 311 uh, but I thought I would just show you around. I'm super interested in this because I think that if you want to keep that Lotus spirit and as someone like me who's addicted to the brand this is the perfect way that you can actually have a daily driver car which is properly comfortable. I mean you can daily drive the Exigias but they are pretty hardcore uh, but you can properly get in this, drive it every day, the steering's a lot lighter, uh, you've just got a bunch of things which make it so much more usable. So really excited to have been able to experience one of these for the first time. I'd never been in, in, in or heard an Avora 400 or 410 before. So very cool to be able to see this and experience it. But now let's uh, spin and end up with something a lot more hardcore. Welcome to the Lotus 311. This thing is the ultimate track toy for anyone that spends a lot of time on track and what's the most hardcore experience possible this thing is absolutely mental it's based on the elise exige chassis but it's basically just taken everything to the next level so it's got the avora 410 powertrain actually so it's got 410 horsepower but this only weighs 925 kilos so not 60 is dealt with very quickly in 3.3 seconds and uh, as you can tell I could walk around telling you about all the differences to the new do to the normal car but we'd be here for uh, forever basically because it is effectively just a completely stripped out car with things like a huge front splitter here it's got new air vents uh, basically the whole thing's been redesigned to be the ultimate track toy it is also actually fun fact the most expensive uh, Lotus you can buy I believe for now we've got a Navora coming around that sounds pretty good. Um, it is actually, believe it or not, street legal. You can get a street legal version. You can get a track only version as well. Um, but yeah, absolutely mental to think that you could be driving down the motorway in this. Blows my mind.
we go around the side, you'll see there are no doors. So getting in, I thought getting in the Exige was hard enough. This takes things to a whole new level. Uh, you basically have to climb over the whole bodywork. This car's finished in a beautiful red color as well. You've got these beautiful rims. Um, you've still got the AP racing brakes. Obviously the car being so light, there's no need to upgrade the brakes. Um, around back, you have a little bit of access to the engine there. This huge uh, carbon fiber wing, which looks fairly similar to the one that's on the Cup 380 actually, maybe slightly larger even. And then round back, it's just completely redesigned. It's not even, I mean, you can tell the lights and the exhaust tips and uh, the logo and all that stuff are derived from the Exige, but they've really just taken it to a whole new level. This is effectively as close as it gets to a race car for the road, it is basically exactly that, a race car for the road. So there's not much else I can tell you around back. I mean, you've got a huge roll cage um, and everything to make this car as stable as possible. Um, on the inside, I'm going to hop in. This time you should probably stay outside, it's probably easier for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to whack the key over there. This is how you get into this car now. This is a mission. Wish me luck. Put this leg over, all the way down there. Somehow try and balance yourself. Come all the way around. <laughs> this is what I've been doing. <laughs> okay. I'm in. I mean, the smartest way to do it, which I haven't done, is to move your seat back and then you can actually take the steering wheel off and that makes life a lot easier. But uh, for some reason, I've decided not to do that. Um, the seats in this car actually aren't the carbon fiber ones um, that you get in the 380s or in the 410, I believe. Am I being, am I wrong there? Yeah, no, they are there. They aren't carbon fiber. Um, they do feel slightly different. We've got these harnesses, obviously, because when you're gonna be on track, you want your four point harness, so I'm just gonna strap in. Don't mind me. Get Put my four point harness on, which is pretty badass. It makes you really feel like you're good to go and you know what you're doing. I have no clue, but you know, every little bit helps. Key is exactly the same. On the inside, oop, there's not much I can tell you about. Uh, you got, <laughs> you've actually, in this one, contrary to the Evora 410, got a tiny bit of an armrest right here. Mm -hmm. If ever you're cruising along. Steering wheel's obviously different, Momo uh, steering wheel. Uh, you still got the open gated. Oops, sorry, that's the, <laughs> the behong there. You still got the open gated shifter right here, which is as amazing as always. The Lotus sort of uh, touch there, which is awesome. And I mean, you can hear it so much in this car because it's so stripped out. Um, you then got here your start button, your lights when you're driving on there, electrical kill switch, your hazards, the little rear view mirror, which is quite cute back there where basically all you see is a tiny bit of sky, some roll cage and your own face. But you know, it's useful. You're basically not really gonna be looking what's behind you because they'll be left behind for days. You got the key, which I'm gonna whack in. And then we've got this awesome, let me show you. If I started up, it's quite loud. There's an awesome Motec dash. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it with the light reflections but you've got all sorts of different settings. So this is the main setting right here. You've got your revs, your speed in the corner, your water temperature, fuel, oil, pressure, um, fuel pressure. You've also got your traction control slip. So actually, I should probably take the camera for this to show this around the yeah. side. Right down here, we've got a little knob where we can choose how much of its percentage of angle uh, we want the car to give us in terms of slip. So that controls the traction control like you have in the 380 cup and that's very cool and you can see it down in the bottom corner right here it tells you you know right now we're getting 1.7 percent slip 2.3 all the way up to having everything off i'll give that back to you Ayo. now this by clicking the button right here we can change from loads of different settings so first of all you can see that there are the dash uh on the dash right there there are the shifter lights so those will light up when you need to change gear i don't know if they do it when you're stationary <laughs> starting to come on and then you can switch to a more analog styled rev counter with your speed and your gear there and then this is where stuff gets all technical you've got your cooling temperatures you've got all sorts of different lap time information everything is there and then I mean it just keeps going you can literally have all the information you want oil pressures Basically, you can set this up to exactly what you want. So this Motec dash is very, very cool. This is how I'd have it personally. I mean, this car is just some next level stuff. Listen to the noise as well. You ready?
That is pretty cool. It sounds so much more race car like than the other cars. I'm gonna hop out now and come say bye to you lot. You know what, screw that. In the end, I don't wanna give this car back. So I'll see you guys again very soon. Cheers, bye bye. Cap saying it, Saturday in the mall. Snow Julia.